Procrastination affects anywhere from 50 to 70 percent of students to such a degree that they themselves agree that they've lost marks as a result. And yet there's no mystery here. For the vast majority of students, procrastination is simple pain avoidance. If you touch a hot burner on a stove, it hurts. You yank your hand back. If you crack open your textbook and the first thought through your head has nothing to do with what's in the text, but it's instead something like, I hate stats, oh man, I'm so far behind, or geez, this stuff is so boring, there aren't even any pictures, how do they expect me to learn without pictures? This will only encourage procrastination. Feeling overwhelmed, bored, or intimidated by the material are all unpleasant emotions. Open the book, had the thought, experience the pain, solution, walk away. The first step in dealing with procrastination is to not get too caught up in trying to figure it out, to find some deep reason as to why you're procrastinating. This is probably just another, more subtler version of procrastination. You are unlikely to find any deeper reason for procrastination other than boredom, intimidation, and feeling overwhelmed. The second step is to recognize when you're procrastinating. This is not as easy as it sounds because for most students, procrastination can be a very subtle phenomenon. All you need is the word flash, statistics, and suddenly you're mopping the floor, cleaning the kitchen, and organizing your CDs. Thankfully, usually students have particular distraction tactics that they use, and knowing what your personal distraction tactic is can help. Many students are cleaners or organizers. They spend all their time organizing, getting ready to study. For example, they might sharpen all their pencils or clear their desk to make sure that they have a nice workspace. Most of the time, this is just pure procrastination, though. Many others use their computer to procrastinate. They surf the web, they play games, and usually their favorite game is solitaire. Others are nappers or snoozeaholics. You know you're a snoozeaholic if you use that snooze button more than three times because you know that you can't be getting any quality sleep from only nine minutes. Whatever your personal procrastination or distraction technique is, pay attention to it. If it looks like it's procrastination and if it sounds like procrastination and behaves like procrastination, it probably is procrastination. The third step is to pay attention to your language, and that is what you're saying to yourself. You can be psyching yourself up for doing the task or psyching yourself out of doing it. If the first thought through your head is, I hate statistics, that's not going to help in doing the statistics. The fourth step, of course, is to just get started. For most students, once they get started, the rest is easy. A good strategy to get started is called the five-minute technique. With this technique, you make a deal with yourself, and the deal is you'll do just five minutes of the dreaded task. Because no matter how boring, overwhelming, or intimidating it is, you can usually handle it for five minutes. And spend the next five minutes actually doing the task. Really doing the task, not sharpening your pencils or getting ready to do it, but actually working on the task at hand. And don't try to fool yourself. Adjusting the font size and the margins, that's still procrastination. If at the end of the five minutes you want to stop and take a break, that's fine. But you'll probably find that the momentum that you have from the first five minutes will carry you through the entire task. I hope this helps. Of course, procrastination, time management, and motivation all fit together, so you might want to watch some of the other videos in this series.